Marching band was actually really, really important for me because I was weighing going to a music school um, and actually pursuing a degree in music versus going to um, UVA and pursuing a degree in business or economics. Um, and so as I was considering my options, obviously, you know, I was involved with marching band as, an, you know, as a high schooler, and so I wanted to continue that involvement. And so I was super excited to hear that the CMB had just been refounded um, just a year uh, prior to when I would matriculate into the university. Um, and so once I decided, yes, I did want to do business, you know, I was like, yes, I can do business at the University of Virginia, but I can still be involved with the CMB and still continue my passion for music. Um, and then once, I mean, it was a no-brainer. Once I decided UVA, I was like, popped in the, the, <laughs> the first CD that came out from, from, the, from the marching band. Um, and from that point on, I was sort of hooked and definitely was gonna do it. My first memories of the CMB were, I believe the CD, so I don't think I had any um, interaction with the CMB really prior to, I'd come down for like an admitted students weekend, went to the bookstore, grabbed the CD, and that was like my first introduction to um, what the band was, and then I checked out the website and sort of got more familiar from that, um, from that point forward. And then I reached out to Pease um, at that point, and we had some sort of email exchanges, and then I came down another time um, and went to uh, a rehearsal and met him there. Um, but it really started with that CD. The marching band was important for me because you come in to TVA, and like you said, there's a lot of newfound independence and you have a lot more free time than you're used to. Um, and I think the CMB fit in in two ways. One, it helped me structure my time. So we had rehearsals um, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 to 8, 25 or, or whatever it was. Um, and so I knew I had those blocks and it helped me just think about how I should prioritize the work that I was doing for the rest of my classes and the other extracurriculars that I was involved in. Um, so it help, was helpful from that perspective, but I think it was also helpful because Coming into the University of Virginia right away, I had an established network of people who had been through the process of transitioning from high school to college already. Um, and they were there to sort of help me and guide me, as well as I had a, a community of peers who were also going through the transition at the same time that we could, and we could lean on each other and, and help each other out as we went through, you know, what can sometimes be a struggle of the first semester of college. Right. I actually was not a drum major in high school. Um, the drum major role in high school was a little different than the drum major role in college, <laughs> to put it to put it lightly. Um, so when I came to, to UVA and I joined the CMB and I saw that the drum major, you know, was about conducting and you know leading the band from a musical standpoint, but was also really about making this band of you know back then 170 people run from end to end. So everything from you know making sure everyone's at rehearsal on time and in their drill spots to you know, coordinating logistics on game day and all of that stuff. And so that part really attracted me, the sort of the things beyond even the music. Um, so one day I was just sort of joking around with Pease after a wind ensemble rehearsal and I was like, hey, I'm gonna try out for a drug major. And I was like this naive first year who had no idea what he was getting himself into. And I think Pease sort of saw that. Um, and he was like, sure, if you do it. And I was like, if you want to, you should do it. And I was like, well, I'm just gonna do it as a joke. And he was like, well, I don't really do jokes. So if you wanna do it, I'm gonna take you seriously as a candidate. And then I was like, oh crap, um, <laughs> should I still do this or not? And I was like, hey, what the heck, um, I might as well give it a go. And so I did, and the rest is history. We were at the old band office that was over in University Hall, the first band office there, um, which was really horrible. Um, <laughs> the Hunter Smith Band Building is certainly an upgrade. Um, but I remember walking in, so there was an the application process, of course, um, that you fill out, and then the first round was walking in and we had to conduct the Star Spangled Banner, but we also had to sing it. Um, and it was a surprise, they didn't really tell us that in advance. And so I remember walking in there and the camera being on and then being like, okay, we need you to sing and conduct the Star Spangled Banner and me being so nervous and freaking out. And I started singing it, I hope this video is nowhere to be found, but I started singing it <laughs> like three octaves too high. So it started, oh say can you see? So um, things only went downhill from there in terms of the singing, um, but um, you know the conducting, I guess, was was good enough that I got to then go to the next round, which was um, conducting the concert band live. My first year when I was a drum major, it was me, Woody Wingfield, and Chris Jones. Um, and Woody and Chris had both been in the band for you know for the prior year and were were much more experienced than I was. 
Um, Woody had been a drum major in uh, high school, and so he also had that experience to bring to the table. So I would say my role that year was really just to soak up as much as I could from the older guys and, and really figure out what the heck I was doing. Um, which I, you know, not sure that I ever quite figured out, <laughs> even over the course of being drum major for three years. Um, but then over the next two years, my role sort of shifted and um, was more around, you know, still doing the drum major things, but also around mentoring the new drum majors who were coming into this experience where some of them had been drum majors in high school, but the drum major experience in high school is very different than the drum major experience here. And so helping them understand uh, what all of the responsibilities are, some that you know the CMB sees every day as you're a member just marching, you see some of the responsibilities, but a lot of them you don't actually see. They go on behind the scenes um, after everyone has left uh, already or before people get there. Um, and so helping to relay all of those things and, and trying to you know, be a guide for some of the younger drum majors. My second year of drum majoring, I was a drum major alongside Jimmy Royston and Lauren Schmidt. And then my fourth year, I was a drum major alongside Jimmy Royston, Theo Smith, and Brian Francica. I've told a few people this, but I, I certainly used to have a recurring nightmare about um, either waking up late or being at Scott Stadium and being in the stands, but not being able to actually get onto the field. Like there were no openings to get onto the field. And so I would just be running around Scott Stadium trying to get onto the field to get to the band. And I just couldn't get there. Um, so that was one of, my, one of my recurring nightmares. As a first year marcher in the band, I was completely naive. I thought I knew a lot about how the band worked and you know, what the drum majors did and what the role of the directors was and you know, how it all fit together. Um, but I didn't. I was sort of in my own little clarinet world, and um, you know, I had my friends, my fellow first years, and, and, and the, the veterans who were around me. Um, but I, I was frankly pretty naive. And then I think, you know, through my years as a drum major, my first year when I was brand new to being a drum major, brand new to leading the CMB, a lot of people didn't even know who I was because I was, you know, I was in the clarinet section. I wasn't some hotshot trumpet player playing solos or anything like that. Um, you know, my perspective on how things worked definitely changed. Um, I, I realized the importance of, you know, working with all of the various people who were in leadership roles in the band, um, and the importance of not overlooking um, someone because they were younger or not overlooking someone because they were in you know a woodwind section and you can't hear the woodwinds on the field or you know something like that and so you know i think my perspective changed a little bit in terms of really realizing how critical the other student leaders were in the band um my first year as a drum major and then sort of my second and third years as a drum major my perspective continued to shift um as we you know as we thought about you know how the different band directors how their roles would um, play out in the band, and as we got graduate assistants and other staff members, um, and then of course we have a, a whole host of volunteers who also helped us out. And I think I just became a, a lot more in tune to, you know, the individual roles of those folks, and then how that intersects and overlaps with the role of the student leaders. In the, band. the first sort of really positive memory that sticks out of my mind was actually the first day of band camp when we were still at the English end, um, and we had the entire hotel rented out. And I remember walking in with my parents for registration and the sort of foyer of the, the English Inn being packed with CMB ears and everyone was clapping and there were balloons and all this stuff and I was just like, what <laughs> did I get myself into? Um, but that was sort of really a, a warm and welcoming experience and I think sort of formed my perspective of, of what my you know four years in the band would be going forward. I think my other memory from band camp that sticks out actually occurred as an alum. <laughs> when I stupidly came back and danced as Bryonce um, as host of, <laughs> of the CMB, t CMB talent show, um, which hopefully I didn't scar too many people <laughs> from that experience. Um, but that was definitely a, a highlight of the fan camp, um, even though I was already alum, an alum. I think my favorite sort of performance experience was at the Gator Bowl, um, and we did this pep rally and the space that we were in for the pep rally was super confined. It kind of reminded me of the amphitheater here on grounds. Um, and there were probably about 10,000 fans 
um, packed into this really tight space. So it was super loud, super energetic. I remember having to run back and forth between um, you know, the drum line that was in the back, P's that was in the front, and the podium, trying to figure out what songs we were playing next and all that stuff. But it was just high energy, um, super exciting. And you know, every once in a while, I'll like, go on YouTube and try to find the video from that performance, because it definitely sticks out as a highlight of one of my, one of my favorites. Favorite song that I played as a member playing in the CMB during my first year was definitely El Toro Caliente. Um, we had like a bull costume going on, like running around the field, which was a little bit ridiculous and over the top, uh, <laughs> looking back on it now. Um, but that was probably my favorite song that we played or that I played when I was in the band. My favorite song that I conducted, I think was Rhythm of the Night. Um, it's just a, a high energy song. Um, and we had an awesome sax quartet that, that performed as well as part of that. There was actually a really cool sort of like triangle visual that we used to do. I don't know if the band still does it, um, but it sort of when we, when Cook was, or Mr. Cook was first trying to get us to do it, everyone was like, what, like, what is this? No one, like, this is such a lame visual. Uh, but then when you see it from the other side of the stadium, it actually looks really cool on all of the, the silver instruments. So that's probably my favorite visual. I think my favorite UVA football memory is the Florida State game, which happened my first year. I was still playing in the band in the clarinet section, um, and I just remember not really ever being in like a football game where people had rushed the field, um, and so not really knowing what was going on. But then I remember Pease like yelling over the headset, being like, "Everyone, get in, get in!" Like crowd round. Um, and I was like, what, what is going on? And all of a sudden, like, this rush of people just started running down the aisles past us, um, and then just over the wall onto the field, which it was such a crazy level of excitement. Um, it, was, it was really, really cool. It was a cool experience to have after, I think that we hadn't beat them for 10 years. I think the last time we beat them was back in 95, so it was like the 10 year anniversary of that. Um, and then there were just hundreds and hundreds of students on the field all around the football team, and the band was just cranking out too, so it was pretty awesome. Nice. I view Pease like um, a father figure, almost. Um, you know, he's a person who I came to when I was thinking about, you know, where I should work, and you know, even after I graduated, um, I was thinking about buying a house, and like those sorts of things, like big questions. Um, you know, I feel like Dr. Pease has been, has been there and sort of a father figure role, and he's always asking me, you know, how am I doing, how's my family doing, how's my, how are my siblings doing, and that sort of thing. I view Cook kind of like a crazy uncle, um, who you really enjoy having around. Sometimes you wonder if they've been drinking. <laughs> um, um, but, you know, Cook is great. He's, he's really supportive, and he has a ton of energy um, for what he does. Um, so, I, so although I do view him as a crazy uncle, I really, I really enjoy my relationship with Mr. Cook. Um, and then Mr. Idzier um, is sort of like a brother, like an older, annoying brother. <laughs> I remember my first memory of Mr. Idzier was actually, we were at band camp, and we had just, or leadership camp, and we had just gone like tubing or something where there was water involved. Um, and we had gotten back to the hotel and then we changed and we were going to rehearsal. And I sat down on the bus um, in a seat and there was a seat next to me that was really wet from someone whose like bathing suit had been dripping. And then Idzir gets on the bus and this is my first interaction with him personally. And he's like, move over. And I was like, but the seat's wet. And he's like, I need to sit here, move over. And I was just like, who is this guy? Um, but I think that sort of, he's like the annoying brother who would like bully you into moving over and sitting on the wet seat and being like completely wet. Um, but it's here is hilarious. I actually still, still keep in touch with him via Facebook and via text message. It's funny because I came into the CMB coming out of a high school band that was actually pretty good. But coming into the CMB, I was like, oh my gosh, we have so many more people. Um, you know, the band is so much better funded than a high school band would be. We have all of these great things. Um, but then to look back over even my four years here and then even since then, <laughs> it's only gotten so much better, um, which is kind of funny. Um, but I think when I first joined the band, we were still sort of in the formative years and sort of building traditions and figuring out what the pregame would look like. Um, and I was actually just looking back in, at an old video from, from our first performance, and I realized that was back in the day when all of the visuals were by section. So different sections were doing different visuals. and. You know, we all thought it was really cool, but looking back at the video, it was like kind of a, a mess to look at. <laughs> um, so I think we just got a lot more structured um, and refined over the four years. And then obviously with the introduction of 
the, the Hunter Smith band building, I think from a logistics standpoint, it just makes things so much easier. Um, you know, looking back on times when it was either raining or really cold, and we had no idea where we'd rehearse, and we would all go over to um, University Hall, the old basketball arena, and you know, we would rehearse in the cave, which was super echoey, you couldn't really hear, and then people would be looking for places to do sectionals, and people were doing sectionals in the hallways, and it was just like a little all over the place. Um, and so to come back now and see how the band has progressed, and you always have this as a home base, um, and can operate from here is really, really nice. I think in sort of a skill sense, the things that I learned in the CMB, um, you know, dealing with the pressures of coordinating, um, you know, the efforts of a 200 person plus ensemble gave me sort of leadership skills that I think some of my peers who hadn't had an experience like that um, didn't have going into the workforce. And then, you know, having been drum major um, and just dealing with people, um, you know, you're, you're working with your fellow drum majors, you're working with the section leaders, the DIs, the game day staff, uniforms, um, you deal with a lot of different personalities. And one of the things that's really critical to being successful in, quote, the real world is knowing how to deal with all different types of people and knowing how to communicate with different types of people and adjust your leadership style to fit um, and to reach those people. Um, and so I think from a skill standpoint, that was also that was also really important. And then frankly, it is just like a cool story and a cool conversation starter. Um, so even when I was in interviews, people would see that I was in a marching band on my resume and we would get off on that for like five or 10 minutes and either they were a band nerd or they had seen marching bands and didn't really know how they worked. And so um, it's a great, uh, it's a great story to be able to tell, you know, in an interview environment, or if you're just like sort of hanging out with your coworkers or friends, um, it's it's sometimes fun to reminisce about your your nerdier days <laughs> that people might not know about you, um, just sort of knowing you in a professional sense.